gonna put our bit in now. Plenty of room in there. So let's shut that up. Oh yes, look at that. And all I would do then would take these outside, give them a coat of lacquer, and then that would be the job done. And these are then ready to use when you peel them off to put them onto our lawnmower. This is the powder coating on that. Our little oven's done its job. I'm really happy with that. Well, as you can see now, that is totally ready for powder coating. That's the uh, caliper now powder coated. We can start the reassembly now. Everything inside has been cleaned, as you know, clean it all down with brake cleaner before I powder coated it. So dry off our bleed nipple and replace our dust cap. And that's it, job done. The uh, brake warning light has come on the dashboard of this Vauxhall Vectra C. The front pads obviously need changing. And while I'm at it, I thought I might as well change the discs as well. They've got a bit of a lip on them. So the pad with the sensor on, goes in first again absolutely spotless now makes them going a lot easier i'm just going to put some thread lock on now i'm using the blue one that was the one that was already on there and i'm just going to give a little spin around just to get them evenly through all the threads right so just slide the caliper holding bracket on and put the caliper retaining bolts back in so there you go all that's back on now calipers nicely floating Put this clip in and when the job's done. There we go. Job done. Large spores of mold everywhere. You can see the sort of state that things are in in here. What I'm going to do first of all is to spray this lot down with white vinegar because I don't want any dust or any of these little spores to get airborne. It's just getting dark now. I've been out here probably about two and a half, three hours, something like that. So, uh, let me just show you anyway. Still not perfect, but it's now it's safe. All right, so as you can see, a whole lot better now. It's a bit dark in here, I know, but uh, none of that nasty mold in here. Take so you in the back again, it's a bit dark. It was terrible in here, as you can probably remember, but uh, so much better now, as you can see. There we go, look. And it's safe, that's the main thing. Again, we're not looking for perfection. We're just tidying up the ugly rust spots. Right, okay, we decided not to mess about touching it up at the front. It looked absolutely awful, I'll be honest with you. So the only thing to do was to strip it right the way down. It's a solid deck. It's gonna be quite an expensive lawnmower, this one, so it was worth doing. We've sanded everything down to a feathered edge there, as you can probably see. And there's some bare patches, obviously, the metal where it's gone back to the metal. Don't forget we treated all this with the uh, vac tan treatment as well. That's it, we're giving it two coats. We're gonna let this go off now, uh, then we're gonna lacquer it. Okay then, it's the next day. This has gone off hard now, so we're okay to put the engine back in. Okay, so we're just putting the final bits back together now. I think you'll agree, it looks all right. All right, ready? All right, okay, let's move that over to the side. All right, okay, we're gonna go for a start up. So that's all ready to go now. That's a lovely lawnmower now. A very big, powerful lawnmower, this one. And uh, now Gary can sell it once it's fully up. Hi, folks. In today's video, we're going to attempt to do a little bit of welding on this old lawnmower deck, and we're going to try and prepare it for powder coating. So let's get on with it. And we'll try and weld a plate in on the flat part there. Right, 
that's the main bit out. So what we'll try and do now is get a bit of card underneath that. We'll draw around the card and we'll transpose that shape onto some uh, one mil steel and then we'll tack, tack it all in. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And I'm just gonna draw around our shape. And hopefully when I pull this out, we should have the shape. There we go, there's our shape. So I'm just gonna cut that out. So I'm just gonna draw this now onto a bit of steel. So let me plug the airline on, get my mask on, and we'll then powder coat this. Right, there we go, that's gone into the oven now. That's gonna bake in there for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Applying this Revive It product, you wanna be a bit, bit sparingly with it, you don't wanna go mad with it. And there you go, I'm sure you'll agree that looks a lot better now than what it did before. And that will dry and leave a sheen on and you'll be able to put your rub your hand over that and there'll be no residue on your hand. So that's what we do with our lawnmower black plastics. So yes, again, as you can see look how tough that is. Now if you dug your nail on that on a freshly painted mower, that would scratch and peel off. So while I'm waiting for them to dry, I'll bring the cradle back round here and we can start putting things hopefully back together in the cradle. So I'll put you on a bit of time lapse for that. Fuel gauge is now fitted into the tank, as you can see, with new screws. So all that's left for me to do is to get the fuel tank, slide it carefully in there. Right, okay. Now I'm hoping there should be enough in there, I would imagine, to start it. I can see it's covering the bottom, so I'm happy with that. We got voltage there, look at that, look. I'm just gonna put something under the center of the uh, fuel tank as a way of support. So I'm gonna get a little axle stand and put it under the middle there. And I can't see the sender cable yet. There we go, ah, there we go. Right, okay. Ah, oh, here we go, yep, that's it. Let's have a look inside the tank. 
there is not one indication of rust in that tank at all. I've got no worries at all with that. So all I'm going to do now is clean everything up, treat it where it's got a bit of surface rust on the top part of it with the vac tan rust treatment and then I'll probably paint it with ham right so Right, okay folks, it's two days later. This little beauty's had two coats of uh, Smooth Right Hammerite paint, which is an enamel-based paint. And I must say, it looks a whole lot better. Right, okay, that's it. The tank is bolted back in. Here we go, this is it. I found this one in the uh, poly tunnel as I've been clearing it out. We've gone through both layers, so when I cut, do cut the welds, I've got the holes in exactly the right places. There we go, happy days. Now I'm gonna grind the world off and hopefully this handle will then come off. <laughs> oh, look at that little baby. That's the tool, isn't it? It's just by drilling these rivet heads off because these have got to come off obviously for it to go into the powder coating oven. Anyway, I'll do the other side, I'll see you in a minute. Cleaned it all down the deck with uh, uh, acetone, so it's nice and clean, and I got it hanging up. So let's go and powder the coat it. That's our graphic with a backing paper on it now. And all you've got to do is peel the backing paper off, lay that on top, and then pull this off. Let's go and put this on quickly. All right, so first of all, I'll just hold it in place where I think I want it. So I'll carry on now, put the dogs around the side, and uh, we'll come back to you when I've done that. It's uh, really coming on nicely now. Brand new plug in it as well. This was powder coated as you know and underneath the exhaust is uh, black normally that's silver and I think it goes pretty well. And as you can see it is a Briggs and Sharon lawnmower and on this side we've got the Springer Spaniel motifs all the way around and coming around the other side as we've shown you before we've got the uh, Rottweiler motifs on that side so One more go up there. Get it away, Barney. There you go. How many people 
cut the grass in during the June in their winter coat. There you go. Look, you just let that flop forward, look. I don't know. That's the one to stop it going forward. Just let that one off and then just keep that one. Oh, so yeah, I don't know, it's new to me. Isn't it? It's all new, it's only two levers, baby. Yeah, so, the one, yeah I know that. How's it going, baby? Stinks. Stinks of what? Old. Stinks of old. <laughs> You're doing a good job. A lot has happened since the last time I saw you. It's actually in gold paint now. It's been lacquered and put back on the car, although only loosely, and uh, it's tidied it right up. So the car is now all in one colour. I'm really happy with it. I've just had the wheels back for the ST220, and they are a nice silver colour now. I didn't go for powder coating. I've just opted for a quick paint with a wheel painter, and it's got the classic moosing sound. It doesn't happen all the time. It normally happens when it warms up and at a certain point in the rev range, it makes like a cow mooing noise. But as I say, I noticed it does it when the car's warm. Oh, there we go. Can you hear that? It's not a wheel bearing because I'm not going along, look. The air idle control valve. This is what we're uh, suspecting is possibly the problem. So I've already undone the two screws there, as you can see, there's only them two eight mil screws there. We'll pull the connector out. It just comes off like that. So hopefully that'll make a difference. So let's put this back on now. Right, so I'm not gonna throw that away because uh, we might do a bit more investigation on, on another video. I'm not too sure yet. So let's put that to the side. Normally around the sort of tick over, blipping the throttle to 30 miles an hour. That sort of a, uh, it would have been doing it now. And all we've done at the moment is changed that air idle control valve. The idle air control valve on this has cured the moosing problem. So if your Mondeo Mark III V6 is moosing more than a moose at a reindeer convention, you might want to look at the air idle control valve like I've done and change that. Hi folks, well, the day has come. Today's the day the triumph goes. Right, let's give it a clean. I stand by you when you're falling When the river is calling Said I love you forever We can make it together What goes up must be down There's lots of friendly faces all around Here we go. 
last time I drive it. There we go, yep. Yeah. Look at that, yep. Yeah. Superb. He's done that before, hasn't he? Bye, Triumph for Claim. Have fun with your new owner. Bye. There you go. Bye. Away into the distance. Bye. Missing you already. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Eh? <laughs> Shall? Look, look. Hold on. I've just got created a new play area for you kids, look. I'll soon fill that. I'll soon fill that with something. You wait till the trotter van goes. No, don't mind the trotter van. Right, that's part one down. We've now got to go down and pick up the El Mondeo to see whether or not that's passed or not. We don't know. Who knows? He knows. He don't know, Sharon. I say Gary's on his way out in a minute. He's just going to pay. There's Gary's car behind me, as you can see. Glad I cleaned it the other day. The wheels are looking good, but... Uh, I want to know if it's passed. I think, hold on, here he comes. Now, is that a pass or foul certificate he's got in his hand? I don't know. Uh, you can never tell with him. He's got a grin on his face, but that don't mean anything. He could be trying to wind me up, I don't know. Look, head down. Come on. Well? Front drop link on driver's side. Oh, you're joking. Clean sheet. Oh, you... Fibber. There we go. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, well, there we go. No advisories. Mondeo passed its MO2 without any faults whatsoever. And today has been a very good day. So this is where the graphic actually is going to sit, but it's very, very dirty at the moment. So I'm going to give this a wash down first of all. Right, just done the other side. Let's show you. I thought I'd show you that just before I sign off. So there we go, that side, come around the back, round to the other side, and the other side's exactly the same now, as you can see. I'm real pleased with the way they went on, and oh look, Rodney's turned up, look. What have you been doing, Rodney? No, I've just come to check on you're doing this right. Of course I'm doing it right, look at that, look. Absolutely, eh? Hey? He said it was going up in the middle. Of course it's supposed to go up in the blinking middle. And uh, yeah, it's now looking like a trotter van. Right, well, here's project bike number one. When I say number one, this is the main project bike. It's a Suzuki GSF 600 Bandit. And um, I've actually been after one of these for quite a while, actually. And um, I've been watching out. It is the Mark One version because I'll be sort of hopefully bringing it back to standard condition. So let's do no more. Let's put the key in. We'll try and fire it up, shall we? Let's get back on it. The old top, drop that off a bit. Look at that. Sounds alright, doesn't it? Done 47,000 miles, but um, the engine is as quiet as anything. As I say, these engines are quite bulletproof on these. Okay, then, and the next one is this FZ Yamaha. Uh, 600 phaser again this is the mark one the first one that come out and this thing is actually although it's all wet and dirty at the moment this thing's actually immaculate i actually bought this one not to do any work to it i bought this one as an investment basically because i think these are going to go up in value let's show you this one so coming around it i mean the condition of this one this doesn't need any work done to it whatsoever again done around forty thousand miles but again these bullet these engines are bulletproof this is the engine that goes into the um Thundercat, although it's slightly detuned in the, the sports bike version, but um, still very, very pokey engine and very good acceleration. This one's been garaged all its life by the looks of it as well, so. Right. It's got one of those aftermarket gear selector things. He says, don't worry about that. It flashes up eight 
12 gears on it or whatever so that can come off or whether there's a way to adjust them i'm not too sure so i've never had one of them before so i can't really quite comment on that and let's have a go wow Absolutely lovely tool. Let's say this is going to be cleaned up and basically put away. I may, even, I don't know. I might use this one for a bit. I'm not too sure yet, but. Uh lovely old tool. And don't forget, I've had bikes like this before in the past. I had a YZFR1, although back in the um, early 80s, I was a two-stroke person, you know, and riding something like this this actually reminds me of the power valve that i had the look of it quite a, like the tank sort of thing the aggressive look on the tank and all that so yeah it's just passed an mot it's an mot for a year now so all i've got to do is put a bit of tax on it a bit of insurance which shouldn't be too dear and uh you can go buzzing around the old country lanes on it but it's really really comfortable and i'm so pleased now that i've got a bike here for example with the higher handlebars because i've done let's turn it off for an elder I've done the touring. I went to France, through France, into Spain on um, a YZF uh, 750 Yamaha. And I went with a couple of chaps. This was about 97, I think it was, 1997. And although I had a sports bike back then, that say the YZF 750, driving through to France, into Spain, I was restricted on the uh, top speed, or the speed up, or the cruising speed, I should say, because. Um, I went with a chap who had a trials bike, which wouldn't really go much above 60 mile an hour cruising speed. And uh, another chap on a Virago 535 Yamaha, which is more like a cruiser. So hours and hours in the saddle for like a good few days on a sports bike, which has got the clip on handlebars below the top yoke. You're forever like, on your wrist all the time because of the wind pressure, because you weren't going fast enough. So I've done all that sort of thing. So, and as I'm getting a bit older as well, I want this site which has got sort of more upright riding position. Right, I'm just hanging these on these little cheap hooks that I've bought. If your part hasn't got a hole in it, what you can do is drill a hole in the part where it doesn't get seen, for example. I'm lucky that these have got holes in, so uh, they're what I'll be using. Right, this is my little Netta oven. I'm not using my big powder coating oven for this job. And uh, as you can see, these little ovens are ideal for little bits like this. So let's leave them on for about 10 minutes to 15 minutes at this 180 degrees centigrade and uh, let them prove. Okay, folks, that's it. Happy days, turn that little cooker off. And these now are ready. Here we go. Nice glossy bracket, protected. Foot hangers, which are now lovely and powder coated. You remember the state these was in when I um, first showed you them earlier on. They can go back onto the Mini Moto last one. Here we go. Happy days. I've powder coated the wheels there. You'll see that uh, restoration go back together in the um, Mini Moto restoration. These are the last few bits I needed to powder coat, so they've now been done. I'm sure you'll agree they look lovely. I've done the old handlebars again. You'll see these in the um, video itself. So, yeah, happy day. So, yeah, just check it out. If you're interested in doing this tinkering about and working at home and restoring stuff, just have a look into it. Give it a go. Make that your thing in the new year. Anyway, there you go. Thanks very much. Hit the subscribe button if you do like my videos. Check out my previous videos, what I've got in my playlist. I've got hundreds of videos of me tinkering about and repairing stuff and all various different types of things. Also, ring that little notification bell. Set your preferences to all. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a video. YouTube will send you a message via your PC or your Android or your Apple device. Anyway, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.